I've got a problem. And that is that I firmly believe, deep in my heart of hearts, that I can do every single thing that needs to be done on this planet in a single day if I just try hard enough. Which is, to say the least, not healthy. And leads to very ineffective outcomes, like my approach to applications this past year. I like to liken my approach to taking a handful of cooked spaghetti and throwing it at a wall, hoping that at least one or two pieces will actually stick. start out by doing a little mini series about vacation schemes because I know this is a topic that's really in the minds of anyone who wants to do law in the UK and I have rel a relative amount of experience about them so I thought that it would be useful to sort of go through. So mainly uh, this episode is going to be about applications, the first step. The second episode is going to be about interviews and assessment centres and then the third and possibly fourth will be about my personal experiences doing a vacation scheme because I have one that is starting actually in two days time on Monday um, with fresh fields. It was going to be in person but obviously because of it is all online so it's now a week and a half instead of three weeks it's all online and the, of course the first time that they've done this so it's going to be a bit different but I think it'll be interesting to sort of see how it is and to tell you guys what the experience is like. Alright, so with that, let's get right into episode one of the VAC Scheme mini-series, the application. I'm going to split this into two different sections. First of all, tactics, and second of all, content. The first is what are your tactics, your approach to actually choosing which applications to fill out and how you fill them out. And two is the content of the actual application. What are you actually writing and what are you actually gonna say? Okay, so some background. So this past year, I applied everywhere. And yes, this, this is a list, this is a spreadsheet of all of the places that I found. And I think I applied to almost every single one of them. Which you may be thinking, wow, that's really impressive. You must have got a lot of offers. I did not. I got two interviews, which is good. I am very happy about those two, but considering it is out of 30 applications is, to say the least, not a great success rate. And so, as far as approach, I firmly recommend that you do not do what I did. The problem with doing so many applications is that they cannot, by simple virtue of the fact that you have other things going on in your life, they cannot all be good. When you have to do five in one week while also keeping up on the rest of your schoolwork, they're not all going to be good. They're not all going to be well researched or special or personalized in any particular way. I remember one particular moment I had gone home for Christmas break and gotten a flu of some sort on the plane. By Christmas Eve, I was laying on the couch with a fever of 102 and was just not in a good spot mentally. I was watching Bojack Horseman and kept hallucinating horsemen in my dreams. It was not a good mind space for, to write applications in. But there was an application that was due at midnight on Christmas Eve. It's like, oh my god, no, I can't miss this application deadline. I need to get it in. And I was sitting on the couch, writing an application at 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve with a fever of 101. They rejected it 10 days later. <laughs> it is not a good approach, is what I'm getting at. Applications are a bit of a numbers game. I would not suggest only applying to one, but I would also not suggest applying to 30. So having said all that, I have basically five main tactics, main tips for your approach to applications. 
First of all, be selective. I would suggest finding maybe 10 firms which you are genuinely interested in and just making sure all of those applications are very tailored. Don't throw spaghetti at the wall. Do research the firm very well. Try to have something in every application that you dug really, really deep for. Some little comment or a case that isn't highly publicized. Something, some small detail that is going to show that you really did dig in and try to get a good grasp of what this firm is actually like and that you didn't just read the first four hits on Google. Don't leave it till the deadline. I know it's very tempting, but a lot of firms use rolling deadlines and a lot of them don't make that very clear. So there were a lot that I only realized the deadline was rolling after they rejected me several weeks later saying that they had filled up their application date several weeks ahead of time. So just keep that in mind and do not leave it till the deadline unless you are absolutely sure that it's not rolling. You chose the firms that you want to apply for. Well done, congratulations. I hope it's a reasonable amount. Now, what do you actually put in the application? How do you fill it out? Well, I'm going to start by just going over a couple of the different types of questions and application forms that you might come across. So first of all, some places might just ask for a cover letter in your CV. In that case, make sure your CV is professional and up to date. Again, make use of your university career services or anyone that you know that knows things about CVs. But generally, for law, you want it to be between one and two pages. If, if you can justify two pages, feel free to do that. Um, it shouldn't be too colourful or wild, you know how lawyers are. Um, and just try to highlight the skills that you have learned from your positions instead of, uh, rather than just listing, I worked at a coffee shop, emphasise, I worked at a coffee shop and collaborated with colleagues and served clients and etc etc. Um, you can find a lot of information about how to actually format your answers online. But as far as the cover letter, I usually format mine with sort of three main sections. First of all, the interest, sort of just introducing yourself, what you're studying at the moment, and that you're interested in applying for this position. The second section, which should take a paragraph or maybe two, should highlight what skills and values you have and how those specifically coincide with the skills and values that the firm specifically highlights. What you should do for this is go back and look at the uh, website about vacation schemes, any brochures that they have, and specifically pick out characteristics that they say they want their vacation schemers to have. These are skills that they have specifically told you that they're looking for and so those are the ones that you need to highlight. And here you just need to take these skills that they want and explain how, how you have demonstrated these skills through previous work experience or university or whatever example you want to choose. And the last section is specifically explaining why you're interested in them. What about this firm makes them stand out from just being a law firm? The part that I think it can really pay off to dig very deep. If you can demonstrate that you've done a lot of research into this firm and that you know about this thing that happened 12 years ago or this case that's going on now but isn't really getting a lot of coverage or this one small detail that you found online that you personally find really interesting that's really gold and that I think is important as to explaining why this firm stands out to you and why you think you you could see yourself enjoying your time there and fitting in well there and being able to contribute to the work environment there. The next type of question is competency based questions. Examples of these would be Describe a time that you worked well in a team, or describe a time that you faced a crisis or a difficulty and that you overcame that. And they're usually scenario based and ask you, ask you to sort of explain a time when this happened and how you reacted. There are several different sort of acronyms that you can use to structure your answers to these, but what I prefer is BAC, B-A-C-K, BAC. And that stands for background, action, consequence, and knowledge. So the background, you just briefly explain the important background details of the example that you're using. Action is what actions, what actions you took that 
responded to whatever the problem was. Consequences are what are the consequences of that action, and they don't necessarily have to be positive or exactly what you expected. But knowledge, the last part, is where you then explain what skills did I learn from this? What did I gain from this? The second, third type of question is uh, skills-based questions. And so these are your standard, what are your three biggest strengths or what's your largest weakness? And the key phrase to remember with these questions is transferable skills. You have done things in your life that you have learned things from, that's just a given. What is really crucial to demonstrate is not that you are capable of doing incredible things and solving world hunger and finding a cure for cancer before the age of 20. Nobody expects that. What you need to show is that you have done things and you can actively point out this skill I learned from this activity that I did and I understand that that's a useful skill and that I can apply it to future circumstances like this vacation scheme or working in a law firm. And that is the key skill really, is identifying skills. The next type of question is why this firm? That's pretty similar to if you were doing a cover letter um, so again, a lot of research, just explain why they're special, why you see yourself fitting in, why, it, what makes them stand out, whether it's op international opportunities or the ability to work in Welsh if you speak Welsh or just because you think the culture is really welcoming and that's something that you appreciate. It can be a lot of different reasons, but just be honest and try to demonstrate your depth of research. The next type of question is why law or why commercial law or why whatever type of law you're trying to get into. This one's sometimes tricky because it does take quite a lot of personal insight and I think it really can be useful for you to just sit down and try to think why do I actually want to be a lawyer? And well, the answer may be the money or the status be that as it may, try to imagine even if it didn't pay super well or have a lot of status. If you still wanted to be a lawyer, well assume you still wanted to be a lawyer and explain why. It can be little things like being able to work with people on an everyday basis and being able to develop those sorts of relationships, being able to help people, being involved in business, being able to do work every day that is challenging and academic and varies every single day. It can be a range of things, but try to be really honest and try to have at least a clear motivation, not just, well, you know, I think it might be an interesting career. It does need to be a bit stronger than that. But there can be really hundreds of different answers and I think the genuine, if your answer is genuine, that will come through and that's quite important. And then there's sort of a whole variety of miscellaneous ans uh, miscellaneous questions that you might come across, such as what is a challenge facing the legal industry right now? I assume there probably will be quite a lot about coronavirus. Um, and these all sort of depend on what the question is. But my general advice is to just research well, don't be afraid to mention a book or an article that you read or something. Um, that you came across in university to sort of back up your answer and just be quite curious in these answers. And there is sort of a new phenomenon of firms using completely different ways of um, people applying. So what sticks out in my mind is that Linklaters has a completely new application system this year where you sort of do like, like a situational test. I don't know if anyone has ever applied to Tesco's, but it's similar to the ones that you take for Tesco's where it'll ask you or it'll say, here's a situation like you are a trainee lawyer and someone just sent you this email, what do you do? And you sort of rate your answers on a scale. So I don't really have any particular advice about these, but just to be aware that it may not be just an application. It's the 21st century, technology is taking over, the robots will choose your career for you. Hey guys, it's Editing Melissa. I just realized I did do a final clip for this, so this is just me saying thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, apologies for the terrible camera quality. I'm just still figuring out my technology. 
Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to finish the series in the next few weeks and then I'll get on to more sort of like study related, more general stuff for all of you non-law students and non-prospective lawyers. Um, and yeah, just feel free to comment below, give me ideas for stuff to do because I've got a lot but I'm always happy to um, take suggestions and I hope you enjoy. See you guys next time. Thank you.